So now in this video, we have the op amp wired as a voltage follower. Trim pod is set to zero volts, LED is off. I get above like two volts or something, it starts lighting up. And then, uh, you know, as I get closer to 10 volts, this output cannot get to 10 volts. So even though we're using a 10 volt supply, um, the LED uh, gets brighter right there. So if I set it about halfway, there should be about five volts across the LED because we got five volts. Um, if that is 5 volts, uh, set to the non-inverting input of the op amp. So I've been using uh, voltage followers and uh, uh, similar circuits in uh, recent videos. So here I have the actual uh, schematic that I drew for the voltage follower. We have the trim pot to the plus input. That is the non-inverting input. So third one down there. And then right above it is the inverting input. And then we have the output. So we have a direct connection from the output to the inverting input, as you can see there. So whatever the output voltage is will be the signal voltage for the inverting input. When it comes to op amps, the output goes in the direction that the non-inverting input is when it comes to voltage. So if this voltage is higher than that one, then the output's gonna raise in voltage. If this voltage is lower than that one, then the output's gonna go lower in voltage. But once they're equal, then the output voltage is gonna stay equal. So when you have a direct connection coming back, that means whatever the input voltage is, the output uh, voltage will be equal to it. It's gonna follow it wherever it goes. And then we got the LED. So um, we have the op amp over here that we're not using, uh, those three pins there. And uh, somebody recommended, and I think I saw this on data sheets or something, um, but that you uh, make a voltage follower, you know, connect those two spots, but put the uh, non-inverting input to ground right there. But I didn't add that because um, then you see that circuitry. A lot of people assume that's important circuitry for the circuit you're looking at, but it's not. Probably okay if you just leave it floating like this, but it's best to make it a voltage follower connected to ground with no load. Hopefully that makes sense. So, any case... Uh, we got the LED lit up right there. It needs a, like a couple volts to light up and all that. But we're controlling uh, basically how much current is flowing through here with how much voltage is across that circuit. Otherwise, it's Ohm's law. We got a one kilo ohm resistor there. Uh, we got the LED. So what the whatever the voltage is, we're going to lose about two volts. The rest goes across the 1,000 ohm resistor. That's how much current you'll have in milliamps. So if we got uh, 8 volts there, that drops to, we'll have 6 milliamps of current. And uh, if we go with the 3 volts here, the LED drops uh, 2 volts, 1,000 ohm resistor. That will leave us 1 milliamp of current that will flow. So, um, yeah, that's uh, really about it. There's uh, two. I'm using the LM358. There's two of them on the integrated circuit. We're using one out of two of them. So if there was a second... Uh, op amp for whatever reason added to this circuit uh, one would be one out of two and then the other one would be two out of two and you don't have to use you know one if it says one and two if it says two you can swap them if, if you really want to or whatever um, but that should help you know that uh, this particular op amp has two op amps on the integrated circuit so now I got my two channel oscilloscope. This is the best way to look at it. There's actually two lines right there. Now you can see that there's two lines, um, but uh, they're moving at the exact uh, same time, except for if I try to get too high of a voltage, then one gets up to uh, 10 volts, whereas the other one gets to eight. This is roll uh, mode right there. I can't remember what the other uh, mode is, but uh, if you're not just kind of looking at uh, real-time data scrolling along, then uh, usually it's because things are going too fast. Then it kind of takes more of a picture. You'll see a waveform that just holds steady, um, and it keeps getting updated. Each uh, square here, though, you can see 2 volts right there. That's each division. So that's 2, 4, 6. We should be about 6 volts, and then 8, and then 10. So when I raise the trim pod up to uh, 10 volts, uh, the output cannot uh, reach uh, 10 volts and it will probably do a little bit better if I remove the load and so I pluck the LED get rid of the LED you can see it bumped up a little bit but again not much so it's not a rail to rail op amp if it was um, without a load at all 
it would get all the way up to the supply voltage. But with the load, it's probably going to drag it down. We do connect the ground a whole lot better. I can get down to a zero volts with uh, the output. Um, even if we had a load coming from the positive supply going to ground, um, probably would not get all the way to zero volts. Um, but, you know, it'll do a lot better than it did getting to the positive supply. But yeah, that's the main thing. You can see right here that uh, uh, whenever I move the voltage, for the input, the output voltage is exactly the same. You only see one uh, line. So, is this the green one? If I yank, uh, nope, that was the uh, yellow one. If I yank the jumper there, that uh, is connected to the green one, you can see it went down to zero volts. It's not measuring a voltage anymore. And uh, now it is. They're exactly the same. And uh, that's because this is a voltage follower circuit. Of course it has limitations. Um, you can overcome a lot of limitations adding more components. You can uh, add a transistor um, where you'll also get the transistor to follow the same voltage if you wire this up right. Um, but uh, you know this is just an introduction to the op amp as a voltage follower. So hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.